Posting on social media is not going to make you more sales. Here's why. Welcome to the Bringing Business to Retail podcast, where I, Selena Knight, share strategies, interview retail revolutionaries, and delve into the minds of e-commerce experts to help you grow a profitable, independent retail or e-commerce business. If you're stuck in a rut, or if you feel like business is way harder than it should be, or you've overachieved all of the things that you've set out to and are wondering what to do next, or how do I even make this better? I know that you're going to love today's episode. If you're stuck in a rut, feel like business is way harder than it should be, or you've achieved all of the things that you set out to and are wondering what next, or how do I even make this better? Then I know that you're going to love today's episode. Here's what most retail and e-commerce store owners do when they want to make more money. They focus all of their efforts on selling. They post four times a day on Instagram, they start making TikTok videos, they spend hours tweaking their website, and they start boosting posts on Facebook. But whilst they might get a small increase in orders, they never get the sales that they want, and they wonder why things aren't working. But still, they keep on posting, they keep sending out emails, because the experts tell them, if you want to sell more, you just need to put out more offers. And if you're not seeing the sales that you want, and you're doing a lot of what I just described, then you're likely missing the key piece of the puzzle that I'm going to share with you in today's episode. A successful, profitable business is made up of five core pillars. And you've likely heard me talking about this before. Those five pillars are money, sales, customers, marketing, and impact. But what most struggling retail and e-commerce store owners overlook is that these five pillars are intrinsically linked. I mean, if you don't have customers, you don't have sales. And if you don't market your business, you don't get more customers. And if your brand doesn't have impact, you're constantly struggling to find more customers. And so you end up in this vicious cycle where you fall back to this safety net of things like posting on social media, just so that you can be taking some kind of action in the hopes that you'll get results. So it can be easy to fall into the trap that think, if you want to increase your sales, you just need to sell more. But what we really want to look at is the underlying issues behind the symptoms that you're experiencing. Just like if you've got a runny nose, you could have the flu, you could be like me, just suffering from really bad hay fever, or maybe you're in the Southern Hemisphere and it's winter and and you're outside and the cold just makes your nose run. Now, all three of those symptoms need to be treated very, very differently, don't they? If you're going to take a hay fever tablet, but your nose is running just because you're outside and it's cold, it's not going to fix the problem, is it? So when you understand how these five pillars are all linked together, but at any one point, there is one pillar that's holding you back, uncovering what you really need to focus on where you should put your time and efforts, when you do that, all of a sudden, you get a dramatic shift in your business. And if you can do this, you are going to see a huge change in your business growth. But the good news is, you don't need to go to med school for seven years to learn how to diagnose the problems in your business. You do, however, have to take a step back to go against every fiber of your being and stop taking action and spend some time looking at your business from that all important bird's eye view. And this is the part where it becomes very easy for business owners to get sidetracked and become super critical and focus on what other people are doing wrong. Zeroing in on things that really aren't important, like, oh, Jane really should have used a different font in that Instagram post, or she really should have posted that as a story, not as a post. That's not what we're doing here. And to be honest, it's really not going to be very constructive if you focus on little things like that. As the owner of your business, it is your job to know where you want your business to go and what you want your business to provide. And I don't just mean in terms of money. I mean, what do you want the business to provide for you? What do you want it to provide for your team? And what do you want to provide for your customers? Generally speaking, it's why you got into business in the first place. 
So if you've lost sight of that because you've been really busy doing, then that's what you're going to need to do before you can come and look at your business with that impartial, critically objective view. And I can tell you from experience, it is so easy to get caught up in the doing, fighting fires every single day, managing people, customers and inventory, being busy. I mean, let's be honest, we are overachievers. Wearing busy is our badge of honor. But if you want your business to grow and if you want to increase your sales, you cannot use being busy as an excuse, okay? I'll be honest and say this happened to me when I had my stores. The reason that my business came into being was because I wanted to create a community for eco-conscious parents and provide them with sustainable products that they needed to support their baby's growth. So I had a store that specialized in eco baby products back before eco was a buzzword. But along the way, when I was busy doing all of the things, when I was managing my team, serving customers, researching new products, I got so entrenched in being busy and trying to make more sales that I failed to realize that the products I was sourcing were no longer in alignment with my customers. So my drop in sales had nothing to do with the fact that my team couldn't sell or that no one was coming into the store or that we weren't getting social interaction because heck, back then you could post on Facebook a picture of an empty box and you get 400 people commenting what's inside. So posting on social media was never going to help me sell more products. The reason that my sales had declined was simply because I wasn't selling what my customers wanted. And the reason that they didn't want it was because I had built this audience of people, this audience of customers who believed in the same values that I had grown my business on. But along the way, I'd lost that North Star that was the guiding reason behind why my entire brand existed. And even though I didn't know it back then, I didn't need to focus on my sales pillar. What I really needed to focus on was my customer pillar. Did I want to attract a different kind of customer, one that was more in alignment with the products that I'd started to stock? Or did I want to refocus on my current customers and go and check in with them, ask them what was important to them right now? What could we do to help them in their parenting journey? So even though, as I said, I didn't know about the five pillars back then, the five pillars have come about from my decade of retail experience, I instinctively chose the second option. I chose to reach out to my customers and ask them what would help them right now. And a funny thing happened. Over and over again, what they said they wanted was things like pediatric CPR classes and advice on how to organize a home when you're a busy mum with two kids under two. And this was important because we didn't ask them what products they wanted. We asked them what would help them right now. And so what ended up happening is we partnered with a pediatric CPR company to promote their courses to our customers and we brought in an interior designer to come and talk about how you can organize your home really easily and we partnered with the author of a baby cookbook to talk about simple easy healthy nutritious recipes that you could make in five minutes or less which in turn not only meant that our customers became more engaged but it meant that we could increase our range of products to encompass these new products that supported these partnerships like kids decor and cookbooks and baby bowls and baby spoons. All of these products that we'd never sold before, but were now in complete alignment with what we'd originally set out to do, which is create this community for eco-conscious parents and give them the products they need to support their baby's growth. And so, of course, our sales went up, but that never would have happened if I just spent more time and effort posting on social media and no amount of hours spent tweaking my website was ever going to make me more money and more sales if no one wanted what I had to sell. Does that make sense? So if you want to make more sales, there's a good chance you don't even need to work on your sales pillar. But here's what you do need to do. Step one is to revisit what you want from your business and who you want to serve. And then 
you can start to look over your business with a critical eye and uncover why your sales aren't where you want them to be. And hopefully you're not just going to listen to this podcast and do nothing. But if you are the action taker that I know that you are, step two is going to be very difficult for you because step two is to take your foot off the gas and focus for long enough to do this analysis without wanting to jump in and fix every little thing that you uncover. And if you are anything like me, that tendency to fix things that you find that are broken is one of the reasons that your business is so successful, but it's also one of the traits that's holding you back from growing even more. You struggle to stay focused on the end goal. So step two is actually the simplest But if you're listening to this podcast, you're probably going to find it the most difficult. Simply acknowledge that this is something that you need to focus on and you can't jump in and fix every little thing as you uncover it. So step one, go back and revisit what it is you want from your business and who you want to serve. And then step two is to stop, to take the time to focus on doing this analysis. And then once you get to step three, you have to step up. Tracking your numbers, understanding your profit and loss, analyzing your website stats and your POS stats, and deep diving into your email open rates and your conversion rates. My friend and CFO, Adam Lean, says, you'll always find the answers in the numbers. And he's right. As much as I hate to admit it, he is right. And one of the first things that I always do with a new client is to look over their stats and metrics, if they have them, not everybody has done these three steps. And generally within about 15 minutes, I can spot several areas that we need to dig deeper into, several areas that are holding back the growth of their business quite significantly. So if you're either not tracking your progress or not analyzing the results or both, you're not going to be able to pinpoint the pillar that you really should be working on. And what ends up happening then is you revert back to the thing that you enjoy doing, the path of least resistance. Generally, it's posting on social media because that endorphin rush that comes with seeing your likes go up and people commenting is way more enjoyable than looking at the numbers that might be going down or putting time, money and energy into something that doesn't light you up. But if your problem isn't the sales pillar, posting on social media is not gonna get you more sales. So right now you have a choice. You can step up and be a CEO and adopt this new way to identify what's holding back your sales growth, or you can continue to focus on pumping out more social media posts or jumping into new social media platforms and continue to cross your fingers and hope that you make more sales. So those are the three steps to uncovering the pillar that you really need to be focusing on if you want to get more sales. And if you want a bit of a kickstart to help you along and point you in the right direction, make sure you check out my retail success quiz over at selenanight.com forward slash quiz. I hope you found this episode enlightening and super helpful. And if you did, I would love it if you could leave me a review over in iTunes. And if you felt like you got value from this episode, I would love, love, love it if you could leave me a five-star review over on iTunes or wherever you're listening. And thank you so much for listening to this episode. I'll see you back here again next week. Bye. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the Bringing Business to Retail podcast. You can find all of the show notes over at selenanight.com. If you found something that you heard today particularly useful, I'd love it if you could leave me a review on iTunes or Stitcher. And of course, feel free to share this episode with someone that you think could benefit by listening to it. Want more retail biz strategies? You can watch the Bringing Business to Retail TV show where each week I'll answer a question or provide you with a simple, actionable retail biz strategy that you can implement in your business right away. If you have a question or a guest, I'd love to hear from you. Drop my team an email at podcast at and I'll see you on the next episode. Have a great week.